This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2024 edition of the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14 GA403. For those of you who follow those model numbers, uh, you know, it's been around for four years now. This is 3.3 pounds, which is 1.5 kilograms. It's a redesigned chassis, still for both gamers and content creators, but maybe it's leaning a little more in one direction now. We're going to find out about that now. So the G14 has a storied history. When it came out, was it 2020? It was just one of the first 14-inch gaming laptops. Other than the Razer Blade, back when the Razer Blade used to be making the Stealth, which really, you know, it wasn't really that much of a gaming laptop. Razer Blade 14 came later, more of a gaming laptop for sure. So it was pretty neat because it was fairly affordable. It looked decent enough, and it had some crazy GPU options given the small size. That's kind of changed this year. So there's going to be two camps of folks out there, especially for you G14 aficionados. There's going to be the ones who say, this is what I was always looking for. Oh my God, it looks so good with this redesign. It looks literally as classy as a 14-inch MacBook Pro, only with the little slash across the lid. Certainly competing with the Razer Blade 14 again. And those of you who are going to say, but last year's model, last year's was crazy, right? Yeah, you can get a 4060 or an RTX 4070, but you could go all the way up to a 4080 or a 4090. That was balls to the walls performance. Something that was largely, you could say, almost inappropriate in a 14-inch slim chassis laptop. So I, as soon as probably said, look, most people are buying the 4060 and the 4070, maybe even the 4050 in the United States. I only see a 4060 and 4070 available for this new model. But um, And the, the, the challenge of cooling in the 4080s and the 4090s was hard. Right. So now we have the bread and butter 4060, 4070. Both of them are 90 watt GPUs. So that's not bad, but it is down from last year's model. So for those of you who reactionary people who are saying, I want last year's model, ASUS has said they're going to keep selling it this year. So if you do want last year's model for that greater GPU performance, because you're about gaming more than anything else, it's still there for you. But for the rest of the folks who want something classy, not so gamery, better build quality, all that sort of thing, now it's CNC aluminum, the entire thing. No plastic under bottom, no magnesium alloy that's light, but kind of flexy. And it's even thinner. I mean, at Best Buy, they have this plop down with the Ultrabooks, right? And it fits right in visually. It's just amazing because it looks classy and because it's that small. But it does have performance for sure. Now, we have the 4060 model here, so the 4070 is obviously going to be 10% more performance oriented. Uh, one thing that they did do is in a year when Razer last year reintroduced having RAM slots, two RAM slots, most of the other 14-inch notebooks don't have any and now this one does not. It used to have one, which is better than nothing obviously. So upgradable RAM, not a thing. If you get the 4060 in the United States, that comes with 16 gigs of RAM and they upsell you if you want to get 32 gigs of RAM, which is kind of a bummer. So you got to get the 4070. Maybe you didn't really need the 4070 otherwise, but you want to be future-proofed. Or you are that professional audience that they're thinking about now who more often than gamers, honestly, needs that RAM because you're concurrently running, I don't know, MATLAB, AutoCAD, RAM intensive applications concurrently, that sort of thing. So that is what it is. Um, they also don't have the scale of manufacturing of, say, Lenovo or Dell who can actually offer it individual singular upgrades and manage make that work in terms of cost and one thing is for sure the cost the price on these is really good the 4060 model with 16 gigs of ram both of them have one terabyte nvme ssds and an oled display we'll talk about because that's a big deal too um it's 1600 bucks for the 4060 and it's two thousand dollars for the 4070 and already like at best buy they have the 4060 on sale for 1450 dollars which is crazy good deal for this. That OLED display, let's talk a little bit about that. Now last year's G14 wasn't bad. It had a nice mini LED display, which has HDR, so it's good, just like OLED. Not quite the black levels of OLED, but you get more extreme brightness capabilities. So people who use it outdoors are going to like mini LED. Um, that was a little older tech though, 500 local dimming zones and more dimming zones makes a big difference. Some of the latest the Sioux models that still use mini LED are up to, up to 2000 for example. Uh, for black or blacks, less haloing, that's why. But right here we have a 2.8K OLED display. Latest technology even has DC dimming. So that, what does that mean? PWM. People hate PWM. Pulse with modulation. The OLED screens kind of flash at you. You get eye strain, that sort of thing. Uh, so this one here, if you have it over 100 nits of brightness, it's going to use DC dimming instead. So it mitigates that PWM problem, which is nice. 
So the display is 120 hertz, sure to make gamers happy. Now, obviously, if you're playing, playing super competitive gaming uh, where you need high frame rates, you know, maybe not, but who's going to be buying a 14 inch laptop to professionally game? No, not so much. Anyway, 120 hertz, good stuff that. Um, the support still has gaming DNA here. We have G-Sync on board, which is nice. You don't see that on the Razer Blade, for example, that it competes with. And we have a MUX switch and we have advanced Optimus. So more performance potential there. Though honestly, testing games on both Advanced Optimus and on the DGPU only setting, I got about the same results there. So Advanced Optimus can be pretty advanced. The bad news is with the SUS, you get these notifications more often about it switching. It doesn't handle it as seamlessly as some other brands do, but whatever. Anyway, good stuff. It's a glossy display. That's what you get with OLED. It's unfortunate. It Maybe glossy doesn't mean it's a touch screen. It is not a touch screen. So that's one thing I'm not thrilled about. I prefer no glare when I'm gaming, but it's reasonably light. It's OLED. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get a 600 nit display here, but you're getting a little above 400 nits, which is nice enough. Experientially, it's a nice looking display and it pairs well with the speakers. You have six speaker audio here, including two woofers. And wow, I mean, you know, we always say with Windows laptops, well, it's not as good as a MacBook Pro. Guess what? I think this is even better. The bass on this is good. The volume, the clarity of the trebles, uh, lack of distortion at higher volumes. This is the perfect Netflix machine. I mean, between this HDR display and these speakers, that's nice. Is it the perfect gaming machine? Well, you can only go up to a 4070 and only at 90 watts. So it depends on who you are. If you're a purist who only wants the fastest and all that sort of thing, you might want to look at something like a G16, for example, with a higher end GPU and that sort of thing. But for somebody who's looking for gaming on the go, absolutely it's capable enough. With the 4060, it's fine. You can have most of the settings turned up. I mean, we even ran Cyberpunk at 2560 by 1600, which is a little lower than native resolution, but just so we're running at the same resolution we do with other QHD plus 16 by 10 aspect ratio gaming laptops. And uh, when you have DLSS frame gen on, it's really very playable, even on ray tracing low settings. So it's doable. Personally, me, I would rather have the 4070 if I was gaming on this thing primarily. But uh, the fact that NVIDIA Studio rather than GeForce drivers are pre-installed means they're thinking about creative types more. The Blender people, the Premiere Pro people, that sort of thing, which it is very capable at and very fast. It's good for that sort of thing, certainly. And uh, 4060, 4070 are plenty enough for that. Is a 4080 or 4090 going to make a difference for video editing? No, it's not. If you're doing hardcore Blender, yeah, having an even higher end GPU could be nice, but Again, it's a 14 inch laptop, so it's, it's very fast for content creation purposes. Well, this sounds all really great. So what's the catch, right? Heat and noise, well, they're actually better. Despite the fact there's no vapor chamber this year, it's a more simple cooling solution. That's also because, well, we only go up to a 4070 now. They don't have to worry about the cooling as much. So it, it's fine. We've got heat pipes here. We've got liquid metal on the GPU. And uh, noise on this, running in the performance mode in a SUS Armory crate because turbo is way louder always with the SUS products without really offering much of a performance benefit. In performance mode, it's the same as other 14-inch gaming laptops that are available this year, which is to say it's actually not bad, surprisingly speaking, when playing games. It's more of the sound of water boiling than a roaring sound. Um, it's good. The speakers are more than loud and full enough to drown it out. Uh, to the touch, oh, it gets a little hot. On the bottom there, in the middle, towards the rear, on the underside there, you, uh, yes, you know, you're not going to want to keep this on your legs when you're playing games. You shouldn't keep any laptop on your legs when you're playing games, but really, ouchy, yeah, hot. And the area above the keyboard, between the keyboard and the display, uh, that gets super duper hot. Do not touch there. I mean, it's like, you're going to touch it, and you're going to put your finger right away because it gets that hot. But the wrist rest area and the keyboard area, warm, for sure warm, but not burning hot. Huh? Speaking of that sort of thing, uh, they did, with this design change, get rid of the hot air blowing on the display, which made people nervous, if nothing else. Uh, so now it vents out behind the display, which is good. But as a design drawback to that, now it no longer opens flat to 180 degrees. It's about 130 degrees. Will most people care? I don't think so. 
other little amenities. You have a RGB keyboard. You can pick any color you want, but the whole keyboard is going to be that single color. And on the lid now, instead of the Animatrix little dot dot LED light up thing, they have what they call slash lighting, which is a light bar across the top that's contrasting. You can turn that off if you want to. Don't worry. There's a variety of only in white. Uh, patterns that it can flash, whatever. That's nice. Windows Hello 1080p IR camera, reasonably competent. That's nice. So what about quality control? The build quality is good on this, so all that sort of thing, and the performance on it was fine. We didn't have any overheating problems or anything like that. Uh, GPU ran a little hot in the low 80s instead of usually see it capped around 75 centigrade. But anyway, um, ports. You have a good port selection here. This is AMD, so you don't have Thunderbolt nominally. You do have a USB-C 3 port on the right and a USB-C 4 with power delivery on the left. Ours happened to be defective. It only did power delivery. It wouldn't do data at all, which seems to be like a constant theme ever since the G14 came out four years ago with these borked USB-C 4 ports. I don't know, and 3 ports even. It, it is what it is. You have HDMI 2.1 on board. You have USB-A ports as well. Of course, a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot, which is better than nothing at all, though I think Content creators are still using full-size SD cards. I know we are because they're cheaper and it's easier to get the really fast kind in full-size. Battery life on this? Well, it's OLED. That's always a little bit of a hurt, but it does surprisingly well. 73 watt hour battery. That's pretty close to the, what the previous generation had. 180 watt charger, fairly compact, smaller than the Razer Blades because that one's a 230 watt. And on productivity, mixed use, 200 nits of brightness, that sort of thing. Uh, we did about six hours, which isn't too bad. If you're just streaming video, then you could probably do nine hours or so. As always, if you're playing games or doing Blender or AutoCAD or something like that, it's going to be way lower. And performance will also drop, too, when it's unplugged as well. So don't unplug it unless you have no choice. All right, to get into the internals, 11 Torx screws. Two of them are hidden under little rubber covers that are held with a reusable adhesive. I don't think Asus was being user hostile there. I think they just thought it was aesthetically more pleasing. It's easy enough to take them on, put them off. Anyway, then pry up from the back. It's pretty easy. There's an inlet here for the ventilation, and you can work way, your way around with a guitar pick or something and take off the aluminum bottom panel, and there it is. And here are the internals, battery here, obviously. To, boy, these are big. No wonder the audio is so good on this six-speaker system. So two of the woofers right here surrounding it. Obviously, we have three fan ventilation here. Good to see. Anything that pulls air over the VRMs or the PCH is good. Maybe it keeps the battery nice and less hot. RAM is soldered on here, as we know by now. That's one of the sad things, though. It does allow them to use much faster RAM than they would if they had SO DIMM slots. And the Wi-Fi card, the MediaTek card, which is not loved by all, typically speaking, I, it's upgradable and replaceable. It's socketed, so you can go and put whatever card you want in there, like an Intel card, killer card, you know, that sort of thing. And we do have a single M.2 standard 2280 SSD slot here, so if you needed to upgrade, you could, and it's enough space, you can have a two-sided drive in there, not a problem. Competitors, obviously, the Razer Blade 14, um, that one has RAM slots, so that's a selling point. It does not have an OLED option. And that's unless you don't want OLED because you're worried about burn-in or something, or you want that higher 240 hertz refresh rate that the blade has, uh, there are trade-offs. The keyboard backlighting on the Razer Blade is more even. The, you can see where they had to cut some corners on this G14. There's like a single LED lighting each key, which means that any secondary key maskings are really pretty dim and hard to see. Uh, but the blade is like $700 more for comparable configurations, so... They're clearly going after them here with this classier build. The Blade obviously gets a performance win because it has 140 watt GPU versus the 90 watt in the ASUS, even if after 100 watts it's kind of uh, diminishing returns there. By the way, if you want a smackdown between the Blade and the G14, let me know in the comments. Then there's the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which, the, you know, obviously that's going to have better battery life. You have an amazing, lovely mini LED display on that. But if you want to play games, really, you're still better off with the Windows laptop. If you want to play Windows games, you've got native playability there. So it really depends. If you're buying this for content creation and all that sort of thing, yeah, I can see picking the MacBook Pro. 
And then there's the new HP Omen Transcend 14 inch, which is also an OLED display 14 inch laptop, only with Intel CPUs. Also, you can get RTX 4060, 4070, but that's really pretty gimped out at 65 watts. That's the only hurt there. So for gamers, you might really want to still look at the G14, or if you want to make the bigger spend, the Razer Blade, obviously. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.